Good morning and welcome to BBA's webinar channel where we discuss the latest issues impacting and affecting banks and regulated firms alongside subject matter experts in the field. My name is Philip Allen, I'm the Director of Learning at the BBA and today for the next hour to discuss customer experience for banks. Can we do better and lower costs by using speech technologies? I'm delighted to be joined this hour by Martin, Tripti and Vadim from BBA associate member firm, Spitch. Just before I hand over to Martin, we want to cover a few housekeeping items. At the bottom of your audience console are multiple application widgets you can use. If you have any question during the webinar, you can click on the Q&A widget at the bottom and submit your question. Please note that all your questions are anonymized and your name and your organization will not be disclosed to any other um, um, registrants on the webinar itself. We will try to answer these questions during the webinar, but if a fuller answer is needed or we run out of time, it will be answered later by my colleagues here, Martin and Tripti, via email. You can also email the presenters, tweet to the presenters, and connect through their LinkedIn connections in the speaker bios which you see to the right of your screens there. We will, intend to, to, uh, we will intend to capture all questions and respond to them within the next 12 hours. A copy of today's slide deck, additional to materials, are available in the resource list widget that looks like a green folder at the bottom of your screen. You can expand your slide area by clicking on the maximize icon on the top right of the slide area or by dragging the bottom right corner of the slide area. If you have any technical difficulty, please click on the help widget. It has a question mark icon and covers common technical issues. An on-demand version of the webinar will be available approximately one day after the webinar and can be accessed using the same audience link that was sent to you earlier. We intend to present for 40 minutes and then answer your questions for the remaining 20 minutes. Martin, over to you. Thank you, Phil. At the beginning of this webinar, please let me first introduce our speakers, so the people who will be talking to you today. My name is Martin, and I will start with the introduction of voice biometrics and speech analytics as a business tool to build a better customer experience, improve sales, and decrease costs. Next speaker will be Tripti, our experienced senior consultant, who will share with us her extensive knowledge and hands-on experience with speech analytics and voice biometrics, within customer experience management, and will present and explain use cases, their business value, and their functionality. And joining us today also is Vadim, our product director, who will support us with any technical and product-related questions. The agenda is presented on the current slide, and uh, please note that there will be Q&A session at the end to, uh, to answer your questions. And now, a few words about the housekeeping. So please feel free to ask any questions either during the presentation flow or in the question and answer session that is planned at the end of this webinar. Or, of course, offline. Please note our contact details in this slide deck, including on this slide. And as Phil mentioned uh, earlier, please note that this presentation deck will be shared with you by BBA later on. And then, now I'm moving on the next slide. A short introduction about who we are. Speech is a leading international Swiss headquartered speech analytics and voice biometrics provider who shares the best practice between different countries and aims to follow the same approach in the future. Speech also owns and develops its core technology components like speech to text, semantic analytics, voice biometrics, and other engines. We successfully leverage machine learning, artificial intelligence, and other cutting edge approaches and technologies. By these means, we are achieving high accuracy, real time technology, and functionally rich solutions. Some of them that are presented in this webinar are unique. To our best knowledge, no other vendors is offering such functionality at present. 
And now I'm moving on the next slide. And on this slide, uh, there are stated important factors when considering speech analytics and voice biometrics. This info is based on feedback from large insights we have obtained to date, including from our clients, partners, or people who are using such technologies. Just to name a few factors. Accuracy, and this is considered to be a must nowadays. Otherwise, the system will annoy clients and will decrease the customer satisfaction. Our speech analytics solutions are reaching 90 plus percent accuracy, while using speaker verification, the accuracy is even higher. No out of the box. In our experience, nowadays there isn't any out of the box solution that will and can provide uh, required functionality and accuracy. In the majority of cases, it was proven that only titled solution based on client requirements in combination with high accuracy technology will provide the expected functionality and operational results. We usually suggest no we no pay on similar approaches that can help to mitigate possible risks and increase the commitment and assure successful implementation outcome. Next one is low pricing. I think this is self-explanatory and doesn't require additional comments. And next one, next important why, uh, step-by-step approach. It is advised to start with small quick wins with carefully selected and defined scope and implementation framework rather than trying to implement the system all in once. Once successfully implemented, the scope can be increased. Usually, a full-scale functionality implementation all in one can end with failure leaving behind a high cost and disappointed client. And I move uh, to the next slide, and this slide is talking about the feedback uh, we are getting from the marketplace. What is perceived as important, uh, and in which areas people see the biggest value of speech analytics and voice biometrics? As you can see on the left, some 57% uh, of respondents uh, fed back that the high accuracy system output is most important. So more than half of the respondents think that this is the most important factor within a speech analytic solution. In our opinion, this is a must. Otherwise, the solution will not provide the expected and anticipated business value. The next 17% is around solution cost. I would like to mention that with new players in the market, just like ourselves, the cost of the solution and implementation is much lower, while the accuracy can go up to 90% and above. On the right-hand side, you can see what is in most demand. Some 21% voted for voice biometrics and 36% for customer experience improvement that can be also facilitated via speech analytics and voice biometrics solutions. For those who will be interested, we will be happy to share this info. I'll go into more details offline after this webinar. And then that is taking us to the poll question uh, number one. Okay, so poll question number one, very simple. How are banks gaining insight into customers' wants and needs with the decline in retail outlets? You can select one or multiple answers for that. Just click on your screen and with the relevant, and with the relevant um, uh, answer, and then we'll move on to the poll results. So we'll give you a couple of seconds to populate that. There is a small explanation for those who are not familiar with the naming convention. CATI, it means uh, Computer Assisted Telephone Interviewing. In a sense, it means that a agent or a contact center or an agency is calling uh, people and asking questions about uh, the customer inside. Like you can receive a call from an agency saying that they are representing uh, company XYZ and will ask you what's your opinion, for example, about their service or their product. Okay, so thank you very much for your feedback um, as well. Tripti and um, Martin, is that, um, do you think that the results are 84% email digital voice channels? Is that in line with what you're seeing? What I can see, 84, almost 85% voted for email digital voice channel. 
Uh, and that's completely in line what we are seeing in the marketplace because the majority of the uh, companies we are either dealing with or we are talking to, they want to use the digital channels uh, for getting the customer insights. It's not just because it's cheaper, but it's also because the quality of the information and the accuracy of the information is much better than uh, through the other uh, channels. And probably it's worth also mentioning that uh, the voice uh, speech analytics is contributing uh, significantly uh, into this area. Like, for example, you can do automated postcode surveys, completely mm -hmm. automated uh, without uh, people's involvement, uh, 24 times 7, low cost, very high accuracy. Good. Thank you for participating. We've got a couple more polls after the audience questions that we'll be asking later on. Thanks. And then uh, took us to the next uh, section where we were talking about the use cases, the business value and the implications, the business implications. And I would like at this stage to hand over to Tripti, uh, who will follow up. Good morning. My name is Tripti, and I am a senior consultant with Spitch uh, at your service this morning. Uh, as part of my uh, section in the webinar, I would like to talk about the solutions within speech analytics and voice biometrics with their applications and how they can be used within different areas of an organization's strategies and focus. I'm going to mix it up a little bit with a high-level overview of the technologies and also drill down further into certain products and services. We live in a digital world today where people have gotten used to the aid of technology to answer the simplest and the hardest of questions. Where's the closest supermarket? How far is the nearest pharmacy? What are the opening hours for this coffee shop that I'm actually walking to now? Keeping up with these trends, which considerably lower customer effort, Spitch as an organization that aims to be at the forefront of these ever-changing, fast-paced customer dynamics have developed some cutting-edge solutions to move with the time. As you see on your screen now, speech analytics is one of our main strengths, and we are having, heavily we are having heavy investment in terms of innovation and accuracy within this field and within this technology. Based on the same, we've broken our solution down into four main categories according to the deliverables. They are namely omni-channel, big data analytics, customer experience management, and fraud management. Let me now drill down into one of each of these areas and give you a bit of a flavor of how they would work. The first one that we drill down into today is the voice channel. This means that you automate the voice channel using machine learning and the aid of speech analytics. The output of such an automated solution could be a newly designed call flow in a way where a customer comes on the line with a voice-driven IVR and gives a little description of the problem at hand. He speaks about his issue, and while he's speaking, voice biometrics is used to actually identify this caller. While the customer is speaking, we can automatically fill a form in about the issue at hand and make a record of this query from the customer. He then moves on to asking a few more questions, which are answered in an automated way by the automated machine learning service. And then he's directed to his mobile app, for which it is a completely voice user interface to complete his transaction. And that is one of the omni-channel voice communication features of speech analytics. The next one we talk about today is more drilled down into an omni-channel approach, uh, which is, again, triggered by voice. A customer is chatting on his smartphone with an e-agent or on his tablet. Uh, and while he's doing that, his voice is used to identify him 
within the application that he is working on. Uh, his query is solved in the same interface without him actually needing to make a phone call to a contact center to speak to a live agent. This interface is smooth, user-friendly, and also there is a, a savings on time there. The next one is a little bit of a visual of how that mobile application voice interface would work on a smartphone, where you can see our little genie uh, talking to somebody who's driving, so not necessarily able to dial a phone number to make a phone call to a contact center, but actually answering the question to the right degree for the customer. The next solution area is within the contact center world where improving customer experience is the main goal. So if we use speech analytics and its output to address areas within the contact center like quality assurance and compliance, a post-call survey live while the customer is still on the call and has the interaction fresh in his mind, customer satisfaction analysis and service usability, Agent coaching and feedback, which also adds value back into the customer experience workflow. And then also a true measurement of NPS and ways in which it can be improved. The second last one of the solutions for speech analytics is the big data analytics, which everybody is talking about today. And this can be done using the voice of your customer. Uh, there are patterns, etc., which can be analyzed based on behavior analysis for customers within an organization, what is their preferred payment method, what are their buying patterns, and then using all that data, we can go to part two, which is the sales personalization. What are their favorite products? What are the categories that they always browse and mention on their calls? What are the items that they bought last? And this massive big collection from these customer conversations will be able to generate a considerable amount of insight and business intelligence for any organization to make their offerings even more attractive and personalized to customer requirements. The next big one within the speech analytics solutions is the fraud and risk management. Again, we can use voice biometrics to successfully and accurately identify customers using speaker verification and identification, and then use this data to manage fraud and make the voice communication channel absolutely secure to the best interests of our customers. I next move on to the unique value proposal that we at Spitch have come up with in order to bring out the best of our technologies and tailor make it to your requirements. And we've narrowed it down to three main cutting edge technologies, as you can now see on your screens. To start off with, uh, the main functionalities are voice biometrics, automated answering, and sentiment analysis. And these would be the key factors in lowering costs and creating a smooth customer experience for different organizations in different ways. If you throw into this the, the, the capability of the very powerful sentiment analysis, you're painting a complete picture of the customer satisfaction levels and also of the customer experience. So let me take you through, drill down into all of these step by step. The first one we'll talk about today is voice biometrics speaker, verification, and how it works. Simple as how it resounds in your head, just the way you use your fingerprint scans in order to gain access into your mobile phones. Voice for each customer and each individual is unique, and your voice track would be your unique identifier. Now, while you're going through that speech, you can use a password phrase, or you can completely use free speech while you're speaking. And the system or the machine will identify you and successfully verify you as the person you claim to be. Now, what we found while we are tailor-making these solutions for various clients is that these solutions are traditionally language independent. However, if we tailor-make them 
and make them language dependent, we come up with a much higher accuracy, which is approximately 15% higher, which I think adds a massive impact to the customer experience and its success. The next one I'm going to talk about today is biometric speaker identification. Now this one is greatly used in terms of risk management and fraudster detection, where not only is the biometrics used to identify a customer and match his voice print to the one saved in the records, but also to match it against a population of fraudster or blacklisted voice prints that are saved within the system to actually minimize the risk and mitigate risk and manage fraud while the customer is still on the line speaking to the agent. It is feasible, it is doable, and it is possible to do this while the customer is still on the call and speaking normally to an agent with his query. The accuracy for this solution is close to the accuracy of speaker verification, high up in the 90s as tailor-made to your customer requirements. The next one I'm going to talk about is a hybrid in terms of a mix between speaker identification and speaker verification. Now this is a technology where we utilize automatic speech recognition to ask a customer to tell us their name and their surname in free speech. Now as you can imagine, there are different ways in which people say their names and their surnames different accents, different styles. And so a, a hybrid speaker identification system will actually come up with a short list of the names which are the most probable match to the sound that the system has just heard. This voice print is then matched to identify a caller from a short list of similar sounding names and their voice is yet again used as their unique identifier to pinpoint and match it back to the right individuals. Again, multi-factor identification with high levels of accuracy. The next slide that I've come up to today is to do a little bit of a call flow duration analysis by segment. So within the contact center world, there are five or six main parts within the call flow. And there are certain duration percentages which are attributed to each of these call flow parts. As you can see, caller uh, line identification is obviously one of the factors that can be used to, act, uh, to uh, identify a caller who's come on the line. However, this is only possible in 50% uh, of the cases, and hence the, the other 50% is left to chance. As you can see, using voice biometrics can actually bring the call duration down by approximately 30% because the machine automatically, during the call flow, will identify the customer and verify the customer as well. And there would be considerable savings within the average handling time there, which would obviously be cost savings handed back to the organization. It also resounds a better customer experience and if we drill down into this further, 70% of the call duration can be reduced if repeat topics can be automated using machine learning. Simple questions about, say, balances or product queries or where is the closest ATM can be an automated service to actually find uh, that there would be associated cost savings there as well using automation. The next one I talk about is the business value of voice biometrics. As we spoke earlier, uh, there could be almost a 15% reduction using speaker verification on the average handling time, 30% totally using a combination of identification and verification, and we can bring about an 80% reduction of customer calls if we automate using the right tools once a customer is successfully verified and identified. Obviously, if there is a whole percentage of calls that are being reduced, we can also minimize wait times for our customers, and we can also offer our services 
almost 24-7 without the customer having to wait to have their questions answered. I'll hand back over to Phil to introduce the next poll question. So which out of the below would you consider as a priority to decrease costs and improve customer satisfaction? Once again, you can select one or multiple answers. We'll give you a couple of seconds to respond to that. Martin, trip two, we've got the answers in. So obviously all three answers above, 72%, 9% uh, there in for speaker verification, speaker identification, and call answering automation. And I would say this is once again uh, in line what uh, we can see in the marketplace. The speaker verification and speaker identification is uh, on demand. There are various uh, reasons for that. We uh, hopefully explain uh, at least few of them, or we are going to explain uh, during this uh, webinar. But comparing to call answering automation, uh, this is probably perceived as more uh, valuable uh, from the business point of view because it does provide this straight uh, business value. You can verify, uh, you can authentify uh, the speaker, you can decrease the cost uh, related to the call, you can improve the customer experience management. But the call answering automation is a little bit more tricky uh, because you need to tune the system, you need to account for each of the possible scenario. And uh, it's probably also worth mentioning that uh, it is perceived in the market that uh, some of the automation that is related to uh, this area uh, was not successful uh, in the past in terms of implementation either because the technology was uh, old-fashioned or uh, it didn't provide with the uh, perceived uh, functionality. So therefore, people are uh, sometimes saying that well, uh, the speech uh, analytics is uh, not doing uh, what it's supposed mm -hmm. to do, and it was, by the way, uh, too expensive. Yeah. But that's what we are trying to change uh, with our technology also, and it's changing slowly. We, we have a number of people from uh, across the world um, obviously joining us on this webinar, not just from the UK, but also from Europe, um, Switzerland, and Germany, and across, across the globe. Um, do, you, do you look at the scientific research that, is, um, that points to the support that um, each, each person's voice is unique and nationality is unique? How, how, is, how do you ensure, um, especially for banks who've got highly sensitive data as well, uh, I assume we are talking about uh, speaker verification of voice, mm -hmm. voice biometrics. That's a good question uh, because people are asking, how can you mix actually those two or mm -hmm. those three? Or what, uh, what, is the, uh, what is the rationale behind? And uh, we are working with the uh, leading universities in the speech analytics areas mm -hmm. in terms of uh, supplying our R&D team with the latest uh, breakthroughs in science. And for example, for the voice biometrics, there are more than 100 unique characteristics of your voice or each, each speaker's voice, they are unique. So the machine can measure, measure more than 100 uh, measurements. Uh, they co uh, provide this unique combination. And it's similar like a fingerprint. So it's almost impossible uh, to have similar voice prints of two people in the world. Yeah. So the accuracy is very high. Somebody, sometimes people are comparing it to uh, fingerprints. Mm. So therefore, virtually it's impossible to mix two people in the world uh, with regards to voice biometrics. And dialects can be um, um, picked up um, by that. So, um, <laughs> so um, when, when a, I mean, many of our members, the BBA are global organizations, if not all of them. And so it is important to know that um, there is peace of mind and assurance there that call centers in India, call centers in Poland, call centers in the UK are picking up exactly um, the, the different um, dialects, different pronouncements as well of their customers. And that's where I think I'd add the tailor making of our solution. So a voice biometric system can traditionally work as a language independent solution. Mm. Where we add the cutting edge side to it would be to make it language dependent and tailor make it to the regional needs mm of where it's being deployed, and to make sure that those boxes are ticked. 
Mm-hmm. But to answer mm-hmm. your question, uh, it's very, people don't know about it because it's, it's very special and unique, but uh, the verification is actually language independent. Uh, so it doesn't matter whether you speak Chinese or English yeah. uh, or whatever is the language you are, you are talking. Uh, uh, the voice biometrics is language independent, the basic one, yeah? and you can achieve high accuracy even with the language independent uh, verification. You can add on top of that language dependent verification because uh, people, each person is talking different way. People are putting the words together, the intonation is different, mm. so it's also pushing the uh, accuracy even higher uh, than with the independent uh, voice biometrics. But voice biometrics in basics doesn't depend on, on language. It's, it's language independent. Ah. Does that answer your question? It does. It does. <laughs> it does. We better get on with the presentation then. <laughs> okay. The next part of the presentation is around sentiment analysis, which is a procedure that is used to use soft skills and emotions on a call to paint the picture around the customer satisfaction. Within traditional sentiment analysis, we use the bag of words methodology where we classify the call based on the negative words and the positive words used. And if the positive words outweigh the negative, the call outcome is assigned a positive sentiment score and vice versa. However, uh, the, the bag of words approach isn't foolproof because the outcome of a call could actually be that the customer has hung up on the agent, even though the outcome, uh, the bag of words approach gave us a positive sentiment score. The, the uniqueness of this sentiment analysis technology has been taken one step further by Spitch, where we have developed something called a cascade sentiment analysis technology where we actually analyze each segment of the call with the bag of words model. So while the customer is speaking, we assign that as chunk one. While the agent is speaking, we assign that as chunk two. Again, when the customer comes back, that is chunk three, and that's how it flows. And every chunk of the, of the call flow is actually assigned a sentiment score. Now, based on that, there is a more accurate way of assigning what the actual sentiment score on the call was. We also throw in an added capability into the sentiment analysis, which is emotion detection, which is the task of extracting raw features from speech and giving it a measurable and comparable value. The three main emotion-related features that we would then analyze would be arousal, balance, and power. So a combination of all these three would actually predict most of the human emotions. Those would be things like amusement, anxiety, anger, interest, panic, and then would also then go on to detect other attributes of the call, for example, the willingness to buy, deception, or any threat from the side of the agent or the customer. This takes us back to poll question number three, which I will hand back to Phil. Okay, which of the following technologies, in your opinion, can help to improve customer satisfaction as a quick win? Once again, you can select one or multiple answers. And again, um, all three of the above, um, 50% emotional detection, 16%, and again, um, with sentiment analysis at 33%. Is, is that in line with what you're thinking of doing? 33% um, sentiment an- analysis. Um. Yeah, I, I would say looking at this, uh, in our experience, the contact uh, center quality assurance and the sentiment analysis are uh, almost at the same level uh, in demand. It's probably uh, because uh, it's difficult to, it's a very wide uh, content, uh, contact center quality assurance. It does uh, cover a lot of, a lot of functionality, 
So people usually are mixing that uh, what is perceived under this uh, name. But yes, sentiment analysis is uh, it's something new, unique, but everyone or sort of everyone uh, we are talking to wants it because it uh, provides this uh, great business value. And everyone wants to understand what we are uh, thinking about, how they receive news, how they receive new products, what they think about the services, and what's their sentiment. It's also part of the NPS measurement. It's also part of the customer experience management. But it's extremely uh, getting more and more important uh, within the digital agenda of uh, almost all organizations we are, we are talking. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, next day, we've, we've got a number of questions that have come in, really good questions um, um, and there. And certainly, I think that if you haven't asked, asked your question, please do keep um, um, firing those questions in. Again, can I point you to the widgets at the bottom of your screen, which allows you to download the presentation um, straight away. Also, just to remind you that an on-demand version of this presentation will be available um, um, within a day of, the, of, of this um, live broadcast as well, which you can review on demand. Um, just, a, just a couple of questions um, that we've, we've got in. We've seen across the globe, haven't we, um, a number of organizations, um, UK, US, and other international um, banks who have used voice biometrics in 2016. Do you see that continuing at that rapid rate? Um, as well, or are we? Are, are those banks testing that at the moment, just experimenting, or is that absolutely the cutting edge, and we're going to see a rise and a rise in 2017, 2018, of voice biometrics? That's, that's a good question, a good comment. There are there are a few banks so already in the UK uh, they are uh, introducing such uh, technology. Like I, I don't want to mention the names, but <laughs> we, we, we know about them. Uh, there are some uh, there is some feedback we are getting uh, from them or from from the marketplace. Uh, what we notice is that uh, they usually started with small uh, test runs, uh, like for example, they introduced the technology for small uh, number of their clients, like maybe VIP clients or special group of the clients, uh, for the piloting purposes, and then uh, it's being released for. Uh, by their audience. There are a few bottlenecks, uh, like for example, with the verification, uh, they are almost mostly technical. Like for example, you need to enroll the voice print, uh, you need to identify the, the speaker uh, before you can verify him. And one of the solutions is, uh, that's what we are proposing, to identify the speaker and then verify. So basically you can identify the speaker on free speech and then verify during the flow. There was also another question uh, whether the speaker verification system is real time. Yes, it is real time. Uh, it kicks on uh, when the speaker is identified and it works continuously in real time. Uh, so, what, for example, what may happen that uh, there may be a fraudster the situation that somebody will steal your phone where you are mm -hmm. talking to a bank or to another institution and will try to do illegal transactions, for example. But the system will immediately pick up mm -hmm. that uh, the voice changed. There is somebody else speaking, and will either signalize the agent that there is something wrong, uh, and that the speaker is not a genuine speaker, or the system can take action by itself, say, "Oh, sorry, but we are having technical difficulties. You need to contact our branch immediately." Mm. Are, you, are you therefore seeing that banks and other financial institutions, and I'd like to include Vadim in, in this debate as well, who's just joined us? Are you seeing banks moving away from passwords? How fast is this being adopted by banks? And are customers embracing this? In, <laughs> in terms of the question, uh, if I understood it correctly, password, because there are two passwords in this mm -hmm. sense. The first one is when you are asking password uh, or the agent is asking password uh, on the speech mm -hmm. or in the discussion with the client. And the voice verification authentication is moving this away. So basically the time the agent will need to spend on verifying the, uh, identifying, verifying the speaker will be saved. And it's uh, between 15, 20, 25 percent depending on uh, the contact center and the business area. 
and that can be devoted to a real business mm. or short and uh, average uh, call duration, so that's additional business benefits uh, provided by that. And the second part that could be probably answered to your question is that there are some verification or a speaker verification system password ba phrase based. Like, for example, uh, the, uh, the phrase you need to say is like, my voice is my password. And the system will enroll your voice print based on this phrase. And each time you call next time, you need to say the same phrase. So it's, first of all, annoying. Secondly, it's not very modern to force people to do so. That's why uh, the modern system are proposing and uh, offering free speech verification when you don't need to use the password phrase, but you are verified and are notified based on free speech. Mm. Okay. Okay. Um, do, um, questions, um, questions hand. So if the presenters would just like to look at the question and answers, um, questions that have just come in, um, um, do you want to take them in hand? Any, anybody want to um, take the question? If I may, just read this one out. Um, what research is there across customer types, especially PVC, that, um, that they want this as an option. Currently, customers on a whole do not seem to like automated IVR technology. Appreciate this is superior, but will customers deem this as a barrier to contact? That's actually a very good question. <laughs> The, the answer would be for, for example, for one hour, <laughs> maybe, maybe even more. But uh, trying to answer very shortly, uh, as we mentioned earlier, we are working not just with the leading universities. They are doing uh, research in the voice, biometric, and uh, speech analytics area, but also with leading uh, call center providers or contact center providers. And they are doing uh, this research, including we are doing this research. And yeah, it's true that uh, People don't like, for example, automated IVR systems, but once again, it depends on age, it depends on gender. Mm -hmm. like for example, young people, they do like it. Older people, they do tend not to use it. Uh, they even sometimes refuse that they are going to the branch. Uh, but if we are talking about young population, uh, they, they do seem to like it, uh, the option they, have, uh, they are having. It's just a question how accurate is the system. Because sometimes people are coming to us saying, oh, we have bad experience because the system doesn't understand me. Yes, it's true, uh, but once again, this is linked to the accuracy of the system and the cap capacity and capabilities of the system. In sense, it uh, could be said that the more the system is trained on uh, real customer's data, the better can the system behave, especially if the system is capable uh, to utilize machine learning and artificial intelligence. And we have some good uh, examples. Uh, the recent one is not from banking area, it's from uh, telecom area, when the system was able to automatically answer in accurate way the majority of the, of the calls. Mm -hmm. But it required uh, quite a lot of uh, training data. Mm -hmm. And the IVR system is uh, such kind of system when the accuracy directly affects the your customer satisfaction. So if you get the accuracy 5% lower, you have 5% more uh, annoyed customers. <laughs> because yeah. customers get annoyed when the call uh, is missteered, yeah, obviously. Yes. <laughs> how, how long does it take to implement a speaker verification? Good question, <laughs> because obviously people are interested in uh, what does it take uh, to get on board uh, speaker verification, for example? And what, what, what we are suggesting is that let's uh, do it uh, by small steps. Let's start with say, the proof of concept or pilot on a limited number of uh, participants, like clients, like, for example, either VIP clients or clients from one specific uh, clients from one specific area. And in, every, if, in case everything is in place, uh, it can take about two to three months to do end-to-end -end, uh, POC implementation, including to be able to test and see the results and make a decision about uh, next steps. There are some dependencies, like, for example, the availability of the data uh, for the voice prints, uh, availability of the hardware, uh, some of them can be eliminated because what we do uh, can be uh, 
place and a cloud or uh, in-house, so even if there's dependency on the uh, computing uh, capacity, we can bypass it uh, quickly by uh, placing it in uh, cloud. Mm. But usually two to three months. It mm. can be accelerated, but it really depends on uh, how ready is the client. Mm. Yeah. And we, we touched upon this before, um, but Vadim, maybe you, you can answer this, this question. What scientific research can, can we point to that supports the claim that each person's voice is unique? Yeah, good question. Thank you. So, uh, Speech is working with tight collaboration with uh, Zurich University, and we uh, get some outcomes, some, some results from, from the university, and uh, the uh, human voice is really unique. Uh, for one, uh, se several of our uh, um, workshops, we uh, did, uh, did ask Professor Dr. Delvaux to uh, speak, and uh, Phil, can we share uh, that very interesting presentation from scientific point of view among our participants? Or the other way, we can uh, publish it on our website, and everybody can download that very interesting scientific uh, point of view for uh, voice biometric. And uh, one, one more uh, matter, yes, uh, uh, speech language dependent uh, voice biometric solution take into account not only the genetic uh, characteristics of voice track, but we also take into account the difference how human to uh, utter uh, each phoneme. So it is really uh, with, uh, uh, it runs with uh, much higher accuracy than genetic voice biometric. Okay, thank you, Vadim. Another question has just come in. How do you capture the, the customer voice print initially? Yeah, let me uh, answer. So, uh, there are two, two ways to enroll customers' voice print. First uh, and the best uh, preferable way is to uh, enroll voice print from uh, live conversation, where when the customer call to call center first time after voice biometric uh, implemented, uh, the agent can press the enroll voice print button and the uh, customer voice from the uh, conversation will be produced to, to voice print. Uh, so uh, as, as more customer uh, call, uh, so, so the, the, more, uh, the more customer calls, the more uh, voice prints uh, are stored in your database. The second way is to do the voice prints from uh, archives. But uh, it depends on the uh, on, on the uh, quality of uh, archive recordings, and it depends on uh, uh, how compressed it is, because a high compression uh, wipe uh, biometric characteristics from human voice. And the uh, other issue is how accurate is the uh, uh, is that recording labeled by customer ID? Because uh, when you store your archive recordings, you do not pay a lot of attention to uh, label if it is right customer ID. And uh, in that case, we uh, can make a mistake and enroll uh, uh, bad uh, customer ID, not, not, not right customer ID with voice print. So the best way is to enroll from the customer calls. Okay. And another good question, does this technology work for customers who have long-term health conditions or disabilities that affect speech in particular, if the condition fluctuates? Yeah, uh, good question. So, uh, first, we, we measure uh, voice biometric accuracy in two parameters. Yeah? First is false acceptance, when the system can uh, accept the fraudster uh, voice as a genuine customer. And the second is false rejection, when the system rejects a uh, genuine customer. So, all uh, sickness or all changes in customer voice uh, do not affect false acceptance. So you can be calm about your security reasons. No, no, nothing of that uh, affects the false acceptance rate. And it is true that the changes in human voice and uh, even changes in uh, acoustic environment uh, uh, from where customers call, for example, from the office, from home, from the road, maybe, uh, affect the false rejection. But the uh, right way to improve that is to improve your voice print each time when false rejection uh, allows. Yeah? 
So if the agent uh, uh, notices a false rejection, and then the agent speaks to customer and asks the secret question, and if the agent assures that uh, the customer is genuine, you can improve your voice print, and next time uh, it will uh, run much better. Another question that's come in, they, um, it says, um, they are already systems that can emulate a customer's voice so it sounds real. How can those systems be detected? So this is voice fraud, isn't it? Uh, what that uh, uh, situation? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, unreal uh, if you use the uh, free speech. So it, it is really one of the reasons why password phrase verification is not uh, robustness to spoofing attack. Yeah, in in uh, a real conversation of customer with the agent, uh, it is uh, unlikely to use some pre-recorded speech or synthesis speech. Uh, every agent can recognize a pre-recorded or, uh, or synthesis speech. So it is, it is uh, unreal in situation we talk about free speech and uh, natural language verification. And technically speaking, it's almost impossible to synthesize this more than 100 unique characteristics of your, of your voice track in real time. In, yeah. in real time. Mm. You can do it and, and make a pre-recorded uh, pre customer voice. Yes, uh, they, they can do but they can't do it in real time. Okay. I can see another question here. Uh, where is the data stored that is used for, uh, for voice biometrics? And it's actually a question that it's uh, repeatedly asked because it's related to uh, security and the uh, way people are thinking about voice biometrics, mm -hmm. how to implement it, how to use it. And basically, what, what is important uh, for voice biometrics is the voice print, so basically the characteristic of your voice translated into digital codes, mm -hmm. and the uh, system will pick up and compare to the uh, speaker. And we call those voice prints. And these voice prints are basically elements that can be stored in a database, in various databases. And there are two main ways where you can store them, uh, either in-house, in the uh, client's IT ecosystem, or you can store them in cloud, somewhere next uh, to our solution. It really depends on the uh, requirements, it really depends on the wish of the client. Mm -hmm. It's basically, wherever you, you place the database, uh, the elements will be stored there. And there can be actually stored in secure data compliant with the majority of the regulations, so mm -hmm. no, no fear about uh, compliance or uh, compliance in regards to data security. Um, how easy is it to integrate um, speech and speech technology with external solutions that customers should already have, for instance, AI, chatbots, and deep learning applications? Yeah, very interesting question. Thank you. And uh, uh, we, supports, uh, we support all industry standards of integration in our system. So for the real-time using in uh, call center, we support MRCP, and for any other uh, using uh, we support HTTP REST, so uh, you can easily integrate uh, our backend solution with uh, uh, any system uh, you need. And what is interesting is that we are now running three proof of concepts. Uh, uh, one of them with uh, uh, with the Oracle supplier uh, in Italy, uh, with regards to uh, chatbots. So um, there are a, a lot of companies provide. Uh, chat text chatbot, yeah, and now we are working uh, on three proof of concept to make that chatbot uh, uh, in call center uh, fully fully voice driven uh, chatbot. So it is easy, and we uh, do have uh, experience how to do it uh, with chatbots uh, and other applications. Thank you, Adam. Maybe next next question. Uh, I can see here there are more and more questions coming in. It's good. Uh, the question is uh, that uh, we are talking about short time to market, and, but what does it mean exactly? Uh, can you give us uh, examples? Yes, of course we can. Uh, we, we are <laughs> talking to our clients or targets. Uh, we are discovering the needs uh, basically on mostly a da daily basis. They are telling us what they want, uh, how do they see the use of speech analytics and voice biometrics. And based on that, we are putting together new use cases. 
One of the last one, uh, it was related to the cascaded uh, sentiment uh, analytics. And it basically took us uh, less than one month to come up uh, with a solution, an additional month to uh, do the implementation, including proof of concept. It was for a large uh, insurance company. So basically, since uh, the idea appeared and the request uh, came in, we were able in uh, about two months, and that was including Christmas and New Year, uh, deploy the solution up to the stage that we proved that it, it works and it does uh, the, uh, provide with the requirements and the required uh, uh, accuracy. So that's one, one of the examples. Second example, for example, the identification. Uh, it also took us a uh, relatively short time comparing to what we know about competi uh, competitors to make it work, to make it uh, robust, uh, and to prove uh, that it does uh, provide with the value and with the accuracy uh, in about, once again, about uh, two months. So it's ve very rapid. Um, we are um, shortly, rapidly running out of time, actually, um, to answer, um, answer questions um, for those. As I said before, um, we will take these questions offline and, uh, and the presenters will answer them personally. Um, please be aware that you can click on the icons of um, Martin and of Tripti um, to link in with them, email them a question, or tweet, um, um, or tweet them um, as well there. Um, also, I'd like to signpost you to a copy of the presentation in PDF format in the resources list um, here, and again, emphasize that um, if you wanted an on-demand version, you'll get one pushed to you um, straight away um, within, 12, um, within 12 hours um, and there. Um, I'd like to thank um, my guests um, here and my guest presenters, um, Tripti and Martin and Badin um, for their time. If you do have any questions about this, um, please um, email them um, to myself as well. That would be great for your feedback um, as well. And um, it, just in short, um, do you see the, the rise of voice biometrics um, climb up and up and up in 2017? Yes, no? So if, if I can answer the question rapidly, the demand is there and uh, uh, people are approaching more, more and more. There is not just interest, but there is a real business case for that. And interestingly, it is not just banking, insurance, for example, but also contact center and even, even uh, other industries uh, are talking or at least investigating for other the, the options. And we obviously are heavily regulated. We're in a compliance um, 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 yeah, we're, we're, we have to be compliant with many regulations. Um, some, of your, um, some of the people on this are multi-jurisdictions, and therefore they have to comply with different regulatory expectations um, as well. How does technology, speech technology, align with regulatory expectations and requirements? The, ma the majority, or I would say all, uh, what we are doing, uh, we are doing and designing uh, in uh, the way that we are compliant uh, with the regulatory uh, requirements. They are different uh, country by country, but uh, it doesn't uh, affect us too much because uh, technology is the technology, everyone is using the technology, the physical limits of the technology are the same, so therefore even the regulators are taking them into account. So in the, in the, I would say, all the geographies we are operating in, we are supporting the uh, comp compliatory uh, or the regulations uh, that are imposed. Thank you very much for everybody attending this. We've, um, we've had a great response, great feedback with the questions, and have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you.